Welcome back to Thimbleberry U. I am John Jagge, joined by Amy Wallace from Thimbleberry Financial. I mentioned in our previous episode, you recently went on vacation, Amy. Um, we're talking vacations and retirement today, right? We are. Yes. Can I be back on vacation right now? <laughs> Even those of us, like both of us who love our jobs, sometimes there's a little bit of that, yeah, not working is sometimes better than working. It is, you know, and I think after the last couple of years, you know, and everything that's been going on, I think this was the first time my family just went away and really enjoyed downtime without it being camping. So there wasn't a lot of work to do. <laughs> and it was great fun. Can I just say, Amy, I know what a workaholic you are. And <laughs> when I got your out of office email, when I sent you something, I was so happy. I was like, oh, good. She's taking some time off. She's relaxing with her family. Good. Yes, it was great fun. We were in Florida. We actually went and visited my uh, mother-in-law and her husband. She's not too far outside of Orlando. And so we got to go to Universal Studios and Disney World um, one day each. So not a big thing. Kind of bookended our trip um, with those and then spent three days on the Atlantic coast with her, with my mother-in-law. That was a great, a great treat. Nice. We live so close to the Pacific Ocean and head over there, you know, for the day regularly that it was really fun to be on the Atlantic Ocean. Now you're talking about where I grew up on the East Coast. And I should mention that when you said great fun with your mother-in-law, you were being serious and not sarcastic. I should point oh, that yes. out. I was. It okay. was actually a great, it was a great trip. Okay. Because that's not true for all people. So I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that. Okay. <laughs> So today we're talking about retirement and vacations and how all those things play together and the value sometimes in getting away and whether it's right now in our working years or, you know, later on in our retirement years, right? As I think about this topic, we so often think about what we want retirement to be mm -hmm. or at some point think we'll get there and figure that out. But I think vacation is a perfect framework for thinking about retirement. And vacation can actually be a tool towards figuring out what you want retirement to be and what's important to you. Almost like a test. Yeah, a litmus test about what your priorities are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're so busy in our day-to-day -day life that, well, we could look at it, you know, as I'm going about doing things on a regular basis. I just don't have the time or the mental capacity to absorb in those moments and think about how it ties to retirement. Yeah. So you can kind of take a deep breath um, of that ocean air and think about it a little bit more. Absolutely. So what you might need to know <laughs> about me is that Florida is one place I have never wanted to go. Okay. I think of it as a little bit like Australia. Um, <laughs> I, I love to travel and there's a number of places I want to go, but there are some similarities between Florida and Australia in my mind, even if this isn't logical. Alligators and crocodiles and poisonous snakes scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I understand. I have an aunt and uncle that live uh, on the southwest part of Florida, and my aunt regularly posts to Facebook the uh, pictures of what she calls Big Boy, which is the alligator that's not too far from their uh, door in a pond. And so I completely understand. Yeah, lovely. Um <laughs> Oh. <laughs> now that I've completely terrified you. <laughs> That's okay. Wow. Uh, I would not want to be that close to one. I did see one. There were a couple of them, but not up close and not fully in the wild um, in a state park. <laughs> so what I think, though, is interesting is that, you know, having not wanted to go to Florida, I actually really enjoyed myself. Good. And my husband and I had some really good conversations that just happened around our retirement while we were there. Mm -hmm. Being there and enjoying the pool that is in the community my mother-in-law lives in, we were talking about how, uh, especially my husband, loves the warmer climate. And he would love for us to be in a warmer climate in retirement. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a Four Seasons girl. I'm the same way, yeah. That said having the pool close by, having it be warm, not thinking about, am I going to go outside because it's a downpour was also really nice. So <laughs> there's part of me that says, yeah, I might be able to enjoy that warmer climate at some point, but I'd probably want to come back to the cold at times too. Um, other things that we talked about were, you know, would we be interested in age 55 plus community or not? Mm -hmm. My mother-in-law lives in one. 
I can definitely see the benefits after having been there. Things that I wouldn't have considered for myself before is that there's a group, a, a social group built in within the community. And there's activities for them to participate in and enjoy. You know, if they want to participate, they can. And if they don't, that's okay too. It's, I think, different than a another neighborhood where there is a lot of different ages because that social network is there. And that's one of the things that retirees complain about most in retirement is they've lost their social network. That isolation. I remember when I was mm -hmm. a freshman in college, I had a peer advisor and she said, enjoy these next four years because this will be the last time you live with people all your own age until you're retired. And I was like, oh, and it's true. And a lot of times people have to fill the day somehow. And if you're in a neighborhood where you've got working parents or you've got a younger couple who's going out to something else during the weekends, now you can make friends your own. My parents live in a condo that's 55 plus and they've made, mm -hmm. you know, I think my mom bakes for every single person in the entire building at the holidays because uh -huh. my mom's a baker. And so she's really met everybody in the building. And then, you know, my dad complains about all of them. So yeah, it's, it's you know, there's appeal in that. <laughs> Yeah, there was a group that gets together at the pool every afternoon at 2 p.m. And they just hang out on floaties. Sounds like a nice retirement. <laughs> it was like watching, you know, a group of teenagers, my 14 year olds there. And I'm thinking about when she's 16 to 18. And it's like a group of her and her friends, but in much older bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably different conversation, too. Yeah, I imagine it was. Um, I wasn't that close to it. Um, other things, you know, we ended up talking about were, gosh, income taxes. Here in Oregon, we pay 9% state income tax. And in the city of Portland and Multnomah County, they've added some additional taxes um, starting in 2021. And, you know, money stretches a lot farther without that income tax. So with my husband being interested in that warmer climate, it's something to consider. Would that be something to give up? Speaking of Florida, I have a college roommate and he has started his own business similar to the way I've started my own business. So I've given him some advice as he's gotten started as I've been about, you know, 18 months ahead of him. And okay, you got to put away money for his federal income tax, the state income tax. He's like, nope, I live in Florida. I'm like, oh, that's right. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And you think about it, 9% state income tax. Well, that's a pretty good size mortgage. Yeah. So... We also ended up talking about uh, timelines for changes on moving. Okay. And is that something where when my daughter's done with high school, we'd be interested in moving somewhere? Uh, or is that later? Or is it potentially a couple different moves? And then um, I think also, which I think I touched on, but the amenities that we'd want to have yeah. in a community, especially in the warmer climate, the pool. You know, in, in the community, my, my mother-in-law is in there with shuffleboard and bocce ball courts and tennis <laughs> courts. And I never saw anybody using those. Uh, the pool got used regularly. Um, <laughs> but just... Just having it there. Mm -hmm. And having it available. Yeah. Yeah. What would we most want? And, and I think along with amenities is both my husband and I really enjoy water and space. Both of us feel best when we can be out in nature. Mm -hmm. And we do here in Oregon drive to the coast regularly for the day. Yeah. And we come back feeling refreshed and, and relaxed. So being in the middle of somewhere, would a lake do the same thing? Or do we need to be able to and want to get to an ocean? Right. To enjoy that, the immensity of it. You know, it's weighing those things. I've also always said that if I lived on water that I would have a um, a skull so that in the mornings I'd wake up while the sun was rising over the water and I'd be out rowing. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, it's just trying to think through some of these things and being in a space where you could say, oh, I actually do enjoy this. Maybe the alligators and snakes aren't quite as bad <laughs> compared to some of the benefits. I'm not saying we're moving to Florida. But it definitely was eye-opening. Are you sure? Because I think I hear your husband listening in the next room. And I, <laughs> I told him that we would be talking about this today, and he laughed because he would love to be able to move back there. Well, no, and it's funny. This is really a great way to sort of figure out what you like, what you don't like. So 
you know, my wife and I both grew up, we live in Michigan now, but we both grew up on the East Coast, ironically, about an hour from each other. We met here. Like I grew up in Massachusetts and she grew up in New Hampshire. And she loves the ocean. She loves the smell of the ocean. She loves the sight of the ocean. She loves the sound of the ocean. But she doesn't like being in the ocean. <laughs> so we have actually taken, neither one of us is great, are great swimmers. So we have actually taken vacations on the ocean at a hotel with a pool. Like for her, she loves being in a pool looking at the ocean and smelling the ocean. And that's like bliss for her. So getting a feel for these things really can inform what you want to think about long term in your retirement. I'm totally with you on this, Amy. That's so funny because it is so unique to each person. And it's so easy in a couple to assume, oh, well, you like the ocean. But like you said, she doesn't like the ocean. And then you'd have to find balance. Yeah. She loves the ocean except for actually being in it is the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. And see, for us, one of the things we did was boogie board. Okay. And my five-year-old is not a great swimmer with the pandemic. He's late on learning that. But my 14-year-old has been boogie boarding since she was five, not a lot. And it's not something I've done recently, but we got boogie boards and I got to spend some time out with her. And then I actually spent more time actually boogie boarding with my husband. Okay. And it was a complete hoot. And... <laughs> One of the things I said is, I want a boogie board with my grandkids. Yeah, okay. Now, my kids have a rule, a rule that I am in such control of. Uh, if you think about how I like to define, is there control influence or neither? This is one I truly, I might have a little influence, but probably neither. My kids have a rule from me that they can't have kids until they're 30. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to be like 70 years old wanting to boogie board with my grandkids. But I was out there and I said, that's important to me. Mm -hmm. I want to go out and have fun with my grandkids in this way. So that's a future thing that came out of this. But the shorter term is I was enjoying it so much with my husband in a way that we don't get to enjoy activities because we don't make the time for fun like that, that we came back and had a conversation of how are we fitting more fun that is outdoors active like this into our lives today where it's just the two of us playing. I love that reset and perspective that a vacation can sometimes give you. And that leads to about planning, right? It does. Financial planning, since that's what this topic, you know, this, this whole podcast is, is about. Oh, that's right. By the way. <laughs> yeah. I look at it as it's about getting what you want out of life. Yeah. And so often I think the perception can be that that's going to be tomorrow or way into the future. And that's not the reality when planning is done correctly. It should be about today and tomorrow because we don't know for sure that there will be a tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you know, our last episode was on life insurance. We don't know that there will be. We can help clients make sure they're planning for tomorrow while still enjoying today and helping figure out what the right balance is between both of those things. And I think in saying that, there's one more thing that we often don't think about in retirement. Sometimes I'll ask a, a newer client, like, what do they expect their expenses to look like in retirement? And they'll say, oh, I really expect them to be less. Okay, tell me more about that. Mm. Well, I expect them to be less because I don't have a mortgage or won't have a mortgage. Okay. Also have a lot more time to spend that money that you're not working. Exactly. And so maybe the mortgage goes away, but just in terms of the things you do on a daily basis, are you going to spend more or less than when you're working? And some of that depends on hobbies. Yeah. Your hobbies and interests, right? Are they going to cost money? Are they not? My daughter has a recent sewing hobby. Well, guess what? That's going to cost her money if she continues that. But if it's reading and she can check books out from the library, then that's not the case. But I think most of us tend to spend more on vacation than we do when we're working. Yeah. And retirement is the longest vacation of your life. So if you're planning for it appropriately, plan for the things you want to do and make, use your vacations to connect with what it is that is most interesting to you. I like that. Vacation uh, is supposed to be fun, but you can also learn a little something while you're away. And now that you are back in the office, Amy, if one of our listeners wants to talk to you about their financial future, vacations, retirement, or otherwise, what are the best ways to find you at Thimbleberry Financial? They can find us online at thimbleberryfinancial.com or by giving us a call at 503-610-6510. 
Welcome back. You have made me uh, anticipating more my trip to Disney World with my wife in October. Can't wait. We'll talk soon. Oh, I'll have to give you some tips. Please do. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jag. Registered representative. Securities offered through Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisor representative. Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Thimbleberry Financial are not affiliated.